Folks, if you're visiting here for the first time, if you're curious about all the terrace hills, those are the tailings from the copper mine, but that's nothing to do with us. It's not the dirt from this place. That mine was eight miles away back in 1962 when the silo was built. There was no town back then either, not a single house. This was the middle of nowhere. The Air Force didn't build these near people. Nobody in their right mind would build a house next to this thing. So we sent a giant nuclear weapon into this very spot. A year after the silo went in, a town started to pop up. People didn't know what these were. Showed up from operational. The building wouldn't have been here. None of this refueling equipment would be up here. You drove up, all you would have seen was the perimeter fence, a couple of telephone poles, that antenna out front, and a big can structure. That's the silo closure door. That thing is one single door. It weighs 760 tons. Made of steel, filled with concrete, sits on the top, protects the missile from a nearby detonation. That door has to be able to rise up on railroad tracks slide open in under 19 seconds, even covered in debris. Telephone pole with the clothes nuts is about 50 feet tall. Double it, that's the height of the Titan II. Triple it, the depth of our silo. The nine megaton bomb sitting in the lobby, if that bomb was live, detonated 14,000 feet above this valley, it would wipe out everything in this valley. From that mountain, 10 miles away. To the mountains on the other side of Tucson, 30 miles away. Everything in between is gone, wiped completely clean. The only thing left standing attacked above ground, for as far as you can see, is going to be that door. We're going to head down now. Watch this step going down. Got to get everybody off the stairs before we can begin because they're so loud. So keep up the best you can. Right this way. All right, folks, you're looking at the second stage of the Titan II. Up above, the black part is the reentry vehicle, just like the one in the gift shop. That's where our warhead sits. That's the only part of the wagon that'll reach its target. The rest is just to get it started. We have seven antennas up here. First one you saw in the parking lot, the big Christmas tree. Ham radio antenna. <coughs> you can reach anybody in the world with that antenna. It has two purposes. One we use with its backup antenna. That sits in its own silo. Raise that out of the ground when we thought the missile stopped flying if we happen to still be alive. Main antenna. White pole on the oil derrick. That won't survive. <coughs> so the white pole in front is its backup. That antenna sits in its own 70 foot deep hot and silo with 10 foot thick concrete walls. Second antenna exactly like it. Over here in this corner still in the silo with the lid on it. That round antenna looks like an egg beater that's called Slivic. Super low frequency, highly survivable antenna. It's buried 12 feet under the ground. 
So it has to get a signal through the ground instead of the air, which takes a lot longer to do. But you definitely get that signal. There's an antenna up in Michigan called ELP. It's about 170 miles long. It's very deep into the earth. It sends out a low frequency wave through the crust of the earth. That's how we can get a signal through the ground, how a submarine can get a signal through the ocean. It looks like a nose cone over there. That's an ultra high frequency antenna, semi-survivable. That's what talks to the doomsday plane. Our air conditioning unit being guided by the poles with the scoop. Those are the tipsies, the Doppler radar. Same concept as the cops grabbing you speeding with a uh, radar gun. They're sending a radio beam out. Walk in front of it, we'll get an alarm. That air conditioner wasn't here back then. That's put it for your comfort. That's just a 50-foot air shaft with an open grate on top. That's the other end of the blast valve. All the breathable air we have down there comes through that one shaft, so it had to be protected. It's also our escape hatch. But you'll never find a missile here whoever thought they could climb out of that thing. Any kind of a nearby detonation is going to cover us with so much debris. There's no way to get it open. There's no way to get out. Now, in order to become a museum, we had to make a deal with the Russians. They also have a museum. Their museum is in Ukraine. During the Cold War, that's where half their silos were. Comparable silo, comparable missile. We nicknamed it Satan 1 because of the 20 megaton bomb they put on that monster. They didn't put this back inside, though. They just laid it on the ground. That's why it's the only place you can see one. So we had to jump through some extra hoops. We dropped ours back in. We propped the door open halfway. We had to put those concrete blocks on the railroad tracks to ride on because the Russians used to come every year to inspect it, make sure that can't open any further. Where the pyramid is, we built a big glass dome over the open half, and we were forced to cut a hole in our reentry vehicle because part of the SALT Treaty says that any time a, a Russian satellite flies overhead, they have to have the ability to look down from space into the missile, make sure we haven't put a warhead back in and made it operational, they don't count it against our nuclear arsenal, and they check periodically. So when you head over there, because it's so sunny, you can put your hands on the glass, your camera lens right on the glass, see all 103 feet, all the way down to this big silver donut underneath it. That's a 15-ton solid steel ring called the thrust mount. That's what the explosive bolt hold the missile to. You see how big it is? You're going to wonder how big the engines are. They're over there. Signs telling you what they burned, how long they burned for, how far each stage would get us. So the rest of the tour is self-guided. You're welcome to go anywhere inside the fence you like. Spend as much time as you like when you're through. Go through the last door on the left. That'll get you back in the gift shop. I got to run in there, man, the desk. So if you have any questions, just grab me inside. Obviously, I enjoy talking about it. Thank my commander, my deputy, any fellow veterans for their service, everybody else spending your Memorial Day weekend with me. Thank you, folks. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I'll see you inside. Thank you, folks. Thank <laughs> you.